All right, welcome to Eat, Smoke, Drink, people. Welcome to Eat, Smoke, Drink. First and foremost, I want to thank Craig Bardell. Thank you for lending me this bottle. Okay, um, through numerous sexual favors, Craig Bardell has lent me this bottle. Okay, don't pretend you didn't enjoy it. All right, so, Big 23. Let's just talk about that for a moment. Bottled in 20. 17, 23 years old, non-chill filtered, I fucking hope so, for the price. Um, Mickey Head was the distillery manager and 46.3%. So, I'd big, I'd big, I'd big. When I say I'd big, collectors and fanboys shiver, get a boner, and they get all excited about I'd big. But when you say an age, an age statement I'd big above 10 years old, every single person froths in the mouth, and just, you know, hunger games and battles for it. Why? Why? Because super aged peated whiskey is hard to come by. Peat subsides through age, so it's probably not bottled so much. But Ardbeg, Ardbeg does not release many age statements because they are a marketing machine. And trigger warning, recently they've been releasing all sorts of shit you know, we beastie, eight-year-old, all that, and even the Art Big Day stuff has been pretty poor, okay? And it really just grinds my gears, and it just annoys me because, look, they're the marketing king, and they love marketing. I mean, they own Louis Vuitton, for Christ's sake, and who would pay $4,000 for a vinyl bag? But anyway, so, no offense, anyone does that. But, you know, Art Big 23 is a true age statement whiskey, and... Let's get nosing, let's get sipping, and let me take you through why it is good or bad, okay? One, rarity. Nowadays, you don't get many big age statements above 10 years old. Um, but the fact that it's aged 23 years, I mean, that's pretty exceptional. That's pretty exceptional for a peated whiskey. So let's get nosing. Hmm. Strawberry yogurt, condensed jam, sorry, condensed strawberry, sorry, strawberry yogurt. It's got a, it's got a really sickly sweetness to it. Fresh rubber, melted rubber, burnt rubber, firewood, smoldering on a beach with some seaweed around it or on top. I'm getting that iodine. Surprisingly, the peat on the nose is still very ballsy. The peat on the nose is still massive. It's still massive considering that it's 23 years. But not as big as your fresh peat, like your, you know, your normal releases, but you can still definitely get that. But it's more condensed flavors. The flavors have been condensed into this dark matter type of flavor, like just like squeezed in. I'm getting overripe fruit. Overripe mango, that sickly sweetness that's on the borderline of rotten or not. I'm getting a slight hint of durian as well, like a, like that kind of off, that weird kind of off smell, but in the best way possible. I, I can't describe it. I'm getting some dark plums. I'm getting like a, a hot stone smell. Charred wood. I think I mentioned a smoldering wood before, but charred wood. I'm just trying to think hard of what I'm smelling here. I'm getting dark chocolate. I'm getting a bouquet of spice. You know, clove, aniseed. Pepper, black pepper, candy ginger. Oh, absolutely glorious. I'm not sure what cast this is, but I don't really care. I mean, it could be, it could be from the sewer. It still smells great. Let's get sipping. Mmm, whiskey down my belly. Mm -mm, scotch, scotch down my belly.
Mm. Mm, the ABV is perfect. Just enough burn to keep your keep your alertness up, but mellow enough that it's extremely palatable. But for a 23 year old, I am extremely shocked at the ballsiness of the peat. I've had old peated whiskies before and the peat just subsides, but not this. On the nose, you don't get that fresh peat, but on the palate, I'm getting rubber, fire, iodine, burnt seashells, you know, like when you barbecue mussels, I'm getting the mussels, like the mussel shell just burning in the fire. I'm getting cherry, cherry cola. I'm getting sarsaparilla, root beer. Wow, it is complex as shit. Oh, wow, that is friggin' glorious. Only if every Art Big release was this good. Cheers. It is viscous. Coats the mouth, oily. It smells like it smells like a building on fire, but you just want to put it in a spirit and drink it because it's so fucking good. That is a fantastic art bag. One of the better art bags I have had ever. And I hate using the term balanced because it's not really balanced, but it kind of is where it has enough aggression but timidness at the same time wow that is so good mm. bacon crispy bacon burnt butter Sage, licorice, oh man, I am so aroused right now, I am so aroused right now, man, you have no idea, I'm so aroused, oh god, that's good, that is so good, I mean, I might just not return this, I might just keep it, I might replace it with tea and water with a little bit of cheap shit in it, that is just fantastic. That is what an Ardbeg should be, and this is the era of Ardbeg before they started taking the piss out of consumers. And I'm, I'm not trying to be a dick, I'm not trying to be an asshole, but I'm sorry, every release they've got gets younger and younger, shittier and, shitt shittier, and shittier, you know, the Ardbeg Oogadale, you know, the last three to four years has just been atrocious, it gets worse and worse. The core of Reckon used to be the benchmark of no age statements, and man, Recently, it's just been younger and younger. I mean, sh you might as well shove your mouth, bloody shove that distillery spirit tap in your throat straight in you, mate. You can taste it so bad. And then you release the wee beastie and the eight-year-old, which I've tried both, and that's just taken the... I mean, why release that? What is it for? Is it a mixer? Or what is it for? I mean, the, 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 the wee beastie is $10 less than the 10-year-old. Why? Why release it? I don't get it. Why did you stay away from this? I mean, is your warehouse too small? Then shit, build another. You know, is your distillery too small? Well, then go 24 hours around the clock and distill and invest in the future so you can make more better shit like this. Because this is what Ardbeg is made of. This is what Ardbeg should be. Not, not the new releases, you know? Um, the new Ardbeg Scorch. I mean, can I go on? Oh, man. Sorry I'm ranting, but this is my third review today, and I am a little tipsy, and this is so good. Anyway, anyway, sorry to, sorry about that, sorry about the outburst, but delicious. If you can buy one, I would, I would drop a oxygen bomb somewhere random where I don't know anyone to obtain one of these. I would, I would commit crimes against humanity to get another full bottle of this because this is so good so bloody good oh man wow cigar pairings I would not pair this with any cigars at all or any food 
You know, people always say to me, oh, why don't you do food pairings with whiskey? And I've discovered something. I don't like food pairings with whiskey. I think food paired with whiskey fucks up whiskey. And any food tastes good after you've had enough whiskey, so you don't need to worry about that. But I think um, if you really want to taste and appreciate whiskey, have it at the start of the night before you've had anything to drink or eat or smoke. Just drink the whiskey, appreciate it, and then progress into a different phase of the night. Otherwise, it just gets lost. It just gets lost. Until next time, make sure you smoke, drink. Oh, I'm still tasting it. Oh, now I'm tasting mm, salty, salty gimp leather. <laughs> Cheers.